Something happened to me for the first time at the end of last year, just before Christmas. I had a company get in touch with me to ask if I would do a review of their product on this channel. That's something I haven't done before and something that I hadn't planned on starting to do. But the product sparked some interest for me because it's an approach to reducing emissions linked to heat that I had heard talked about a little bit over the last few years. And if I'm honest, it's an approach that I have to some extent ignored, but one that may have some potential for reducing our reliance on gas in the short term and doing so in a fairly cost effective manner. So here is a review of a Mirrorstone infrared radiator and some thoughts about how we might use this kind of technology in a low carbon future. So first of all, let's start up with what's in the box. Okay, so what have we got here? A Mirrorstone infrared heating panel. Love it. Let's get into it. Okay, looks pretty simple. That's the panel. These are some feet. What else do we have? Okay, in here, got plug, it's like a controller, some instructions, and some mountain buckets. Well, let's try and get this open too. Okay, so these are brackets that you can mount it on the wall with. And with these screws, that means it could just be wall mounted like a normal radiator. Great. Opening up, there isn't much to say. It looks like a surprisingly simple piece of technology. A plug, a black box on the back, some mounting brackets, a remote and a big white surface. It looks fairly simple. Ultimately, it's plug and play, remote controlled and simple. Let's raise up. That weighs up. And we could just put it on these feet. Cool. So, 350 watt infrared panel heater from Mirrorstone and so you're heating. I think this is going to go into our office to keep Esther nice and cosy when she's working from home. Okay, so what makes this panel different to other plug-in radiators, whether it's an oil-filled radiator or a fan heater? Well, it's the way that it provides heat. Infrared radiators provide warmth by directing infrared radiation at an object. And this is what we call radiative heat. It's similar to when on a cold winter's day, you still feel warm in sunlight. Infrared heat and radiative heat is, is compared with traditional radiators, either in a central heating system or, or plug-in radiators that, despite the name radiator, actually provide heat through convection, whether it's heat in the air or through conduction, if you're sat touching or leaning against a radiator. So let's just go back briefly to GCSE physics. The infrared radiation in this panel um, is a wave on the electromagnetic spectrum, similar to microwaves, ultraviolet and visible light, as well as X-rays, radio waves and gamma ray radiation. Infrared is slightly long, is a slightly longer wavelength to visible light, but shorter than radio waves and microwaves. So a panel like this produces an infrared wave that spreads throughout a room and heats what it hits. It doesn't directly heat the air like a conventional radiator, but heats the people or the objects that it radiates to. And the suggestion is because you're not heating the air, you can use less energy to provide the same comfort. And that sounds great, doesn't it? Well, we really should just try it out. I'm going to set this panel up in the office that I share with my wife. Esther works from home almost every day, whereas I tend to go in the office most days. But with this in the office, we could maybe get that little bit more heat, make us really cozy warm rather than heating the whole house. I'm going to set it up in the office and see how we get on for the next few days. How does it feel? Does it heat up the space in the same way? Are we comfortable with a heater like this? What about supplementing the heat from our heat pump? Are we, are we going to enjoy having that extra heat with a panel like this in our room? I'm also going to plug it in using a smart plug so I can measure exactly how much energy it uses and control it to avoid the highest costs on our Octopus Agile tariff. But this channel is about much more than just comfort. 
what would an IR panel mean for our energy use, our costs and our emissions? And how would heating one room compare with heating the whole house with a heat pump? What about scrapping the heat pump altogether? Or even more importantly, scrapping the gas boiler and just using IR panels in every room? Well, as well as enjoying it for the next few days, let's do the maths and then check back with the smart meter in a couple of days. So the literature for this panel suggests that it converts almost 90% of the electricity used to power it into heat. So we could say it's 90% efficient. One unit of electricity, 0.9 units of heat. Just a little thought from the edit. Um, losses for electric heaters will be losses in the form of heat. So really this panel heater is probably actually 100% efficient. Um, it might not produce 100%, but well, yeah, one kilowatt hour of electricity might not produce heat in the form of IR, IR waves at 100% efficiency, but any losses will be losses in heat. So we could say it's 100% efficient, maybe. And this would be compared to a heat pump with one unit of electricity generating three or more units of heat. So on the face of it, a heat pump is three or four times more efficient than this IR panel. And the IR panel has an efficiency similar to a gas boiler. But then we're not comparing apples with apples. A heat pump or a gas boiler with a radiator circuit is heating a room through convection, heating the air, making the air temperature and the space more comfortable. So we're heating the whole volume of a, of a room and for a, for a central heating system, the whole volume of a house. What if with one of these, in just heating surfaces and people, we needed much less energy in the first place? So this panel is a 350 watt panel. So it says it's got a power consumption of around 350 watts. And it suggests that this can heat an area of five to six meters squared. Our little office is actually about six meters squared. So this should be perfect, but we could move it around to other spaces if we wanted to or needed. And the question that I'll be able to answer when we've used it for a few days is, well, how much energy does it actually use? If it used 350 watts constantly, that will be nearly 8.4 kilowatt hours in a 24 hour period or three ish kilowatt hours over a working day. But maybe it doesn't use power constantly to maintain comfort. Okay, so we've been using it for um, a few days now. Um, here we go, the panel heater. Uh, I've turned the radiator off in here and I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit and then I'm gonna see how quickly the panel heater can heat on its own um, and whether we can get the office space up to a nice temperature. So let's see briefly. Okay, so this thermometer says it's 17.6 in the office. The controller says it's 17.3, 17.4. Let's see how quickly we can get it to 21. Okay, so I'll have to turn it on. And we're heating from 17.4 up to 21. Let's see. Some time later. Okay, I've been sat working away for about an hour in the space now. We've had the panel on the whole time. Um, and we've gone from about 17.4, 17.5 degrees C to 19.3 in this hour. I've got it set to heat to 21 degrees, but it looks like it's getting there over a period of time, which is great. So over that hour, it's averaged around 300 watts of electricity load, and therefore it's used around 0.33 kilowatt hours over the whole hour. Over the last seven days in supplementing heat from the heat pump, we've had a total consumption of almost six kilowatt hours and a daily average of only 0.85 kilowatt hours. So this panel isn't actually using that much energy to make the office space that bit more comfortable. And I guess the point about IR panels is that you could feel comfortable through the infrared rays and the temperature might not rise that quickly. So controlling it by temperature is a bit, a bit odd it will increase the temperature of a space. Anyway, I'm comfy. There's no radio output from the heat pump because I've turned the radiator off and the temperature in the space seems to be going up. Um, it's now 19.4. Anyway, yeah, it's fine. It's great. Okay, so we, we've seen that the IR panel can 
keep us warm in our little office uh, by topping up the temperature so that we're nice and cozy. It hasn't actually used huge amounts of electricity in supplementing heat from the heat pump. So might this be a solution for a low carbon heating system across a whole house? You could hang panels on walls or on ceilings, um, so they can be quite a subtle installation, although we may need a little bit of interesting electrical installation to go alongside them. But I guess the question is, would you want to rely on infrared panels and replace your normal radiator system completely? And I guess you could, but I'm a little bit nervous. If we're only heating spaces when we're in them and leaving parts to go really cold, then there will be parts of house that would rarely, for, for us anyway, in our house where we're mainly either in our bedroom, the office or the kitchen, there will be parts of the house that would rarely get any heat at all. And that could mean that we get issues linked to moisture, to condensation and I guess mold. And then practically it might not stack up to install IR panels in every space. In our house, instead of radiators and a little bit of underfloor heating, um, that, that is currently heated from our heat pump, we would need, let's say, nine panels to heat every room. The one that we've been given to review, this one here, costs about 180, 200 pounds. So this would be nearly 2,000 pounds to put a panel in every room, plus any additional wiring, electrical installation that we'd need to, to power the panels themselves. And it would mean that we'd need to source our hot water for showers, for washing up, for hand washing, and all that kind of stuff in a different manner. So maybe a new and a different hot water system. Okay, so maybe infrared panels aren't the solution for a whole heating system in a house like ours. But maybe if you use a particular room more often than others, or you rarely used uh, that, that room and didn't want to heat it often, an infrared panel could be a quick way to give some extra heat to that space. That little snug room where you sit every night to watch telly, turn down the rest of the heating, heat up the room you're using, and reduce emissions, reduce costs. This is the case for us in Esther's office or the office that we share. We could keep the rest of the house a little bit cooler and just heat the office. And I think this is definitely an option. And if we still had a gas boiler, I'd be jumping at the chance to use less gas and still be comfortable, still be warm. I can imagine keeping the thermostat down for the rest of the house, maybe let's say 15 degrees, 60, 17 degrees maybe for most of the day, and boosting the office for that working day. We would need less heat. We could use less gas, just heating the spaces that we need. And we could use a low carbon heat source, the infrared panel, when we need it. We'd stay comfortable, but we'd have the potential to reduce our heating emissions substantially. So for lots of people, in lots of cases, just heating the space we need like this could be a good step forward in reducing emissions. Can you see a case of this working in your home? You do hear that there are some new builds that are using electric panel heaters or infrared panels as the main source of heat, particularly flats or small new houses where a full central heating system may not be a good option in terms of cost. And I can imagine that if a house was insulated well with good air tightness, these kinds of panels could provide an effective way of adding that extra heat without a huge capital cost and with okay running costs but I would pretty much always prefer the multiplier effect of a heat pump's efficiency for most buildings. But one thing to know is that an all electric heating system, whether it's electric panel heaters, infrared panels, or a heat pump installation, that gives a building a path to very low emissions. And as the electricity grid continues to decarbonize, and there's been some coverage over the last few weeks highlighting that electricity is getting cleaner and cleaner, with 2023 being the cleanest uh, electricity for, well, forever, then any of these solutions will offer a low carbon way to heat buildings. So if we could use an IR panel instead of a gas boiler, this would reduce your emissions. A heat pump could reduce them even further, but any electrification is a good start. Okay, so back to our trial over the last couple of weeks. We've used this panel mainly as supplementary heating in our office, uh, whilst we heated the rest of the house with the heat pump. Before we had the IR panel, we tended to be warm enough without it, but this just meant that we were even more cozy, even more comfortable in the office space. And looking at the data from the smart plug, it doesn't actually seem to use that much energy. 
And most importantly, as a dog with black fur, maybe an IR panel provides a perfect place to curl up for your midday doze. And Asher has definitely found a nice new place to sleep in front of the panel. Okay, so after having a infrared panel uh, and using it a little bit over the last few weeks, my conclusion is this, that this particular panel, the Mirrorstone one from Surya Heating is a simple but snazzy bit of kit. It's really simple to use, a really simple remote controller. And it's nice to feel a little bit more comfortable in the space that we're spending long hours during the work week. Importantly, if you were looking to reduce reliance on your gas boiler and decarbonize your heating a bit, um, but not ready to install a heat pump, this could be a quick way to reduce reliance on gas heating that little bit, or maybe substantially. Turn the central heating thermostat down or turn the flow temperature down for your boiler, turn that right down or turn the heating system off completely for periods of the day and supplement heat with a little IR panel like this. That would be a great way to move to a low emissions heating system. And it could mean that you reduce emissions quite quickly. Ultimately for us, I don't think we need one. Our heat pump keeps the whole house nice and warm with low costs and low emissions, and we're pretty happy with how it works. But having supplementary heat in the office is maybe a little bit of a treat on the coldest days. And if we still had a gas boiler, I might want to use infrared panels instead. Or if we had an outdoor room or an outdoor office, um, I might want to heat this with an infrared panel. And that might be a cheap way to offer low emissions heat without a big, uh, a big investment. So have I changed my view on infrared panels? I said at the start, I've tended to ignore IR panels as a solution before. So yeah, I probably have changed perspective a little bit. They definitely can provide heat and they probably use less energy than I thought. And I think I would recommend uh, IR panels to help reduce emissions quickly, particularly if we were able to reduce our reliance on a gas boiler at the same time. So thanks to Vimal at Surya Heating for letting me try it out. Uh, if you want to look at their shop online, I've put a link in the description below.